Hi, Robert McClemon here with a quick video for students in ES 101 at Wilfrid Laurier University. This one's to introduce the first of five lab assignments that we're going to be doing in this course. And in this assignment, we're going to be thinking about fast food as the output of complex systems. Now, when I was a kid, uh, I can still remember when the first McDonald's restaurant came to my hometown. We were pretty excited because those were the days when McDonald's marketed directly to children through uh, little comic strips that they would have on TV with Ronald McDonald and the Hamburglar and Mayor McCheese and all these other characters. characters. Um, they also had these little jingles that they would sing as well to help us memorize the ingredients of a Big Mac. So one of them went sort of like this. Two all beef patty, special sauce, cheese, lettuce, pickles, onions on a sesame seed bun. Now two things you can see. One is that I never did really learn how to sing jingles. The other is that it was pretty effective marketing because even today I still remember the, the key components of a Big Mac. Which is okay because I use that information in putting together the lab instructions for this assignment. So what we're doing here is we want to take your favorite fast food item and to treat it as the output of a complex set of interactions between natural and human systems. And so, to start with, what we're going to do is identify the key ingredients in your favorite fast food item. Let's use the Big Mac for illustration. So you've got the buns, you've got the meat, you've got the sauce, you've got the cheese, and so on. And what you're going to do is to trace those ingredients back to their origins in the plants or animals that were farmed uh, to make the ingredients. So, for example, uh, there is cattle raised on farms for beef. They're going to be... Uh, transported to slaughterhouses and ground into ground beef. Uh, there's the grain that is grown to make the flour that goes into the buns. There's the dairy cattle that are milked to make the cheese and so on. I'm standing in front of a soybean field here and the soybeans that are raised here are going to eventually be taken in for processing where they'll be made into things like uh, like cooking oils that will be used to fry the Big Mac hamburger. Now the food ingredients, the plant and animal ingredients, are only one set of inputs to a Big Mac because of course the the cattle don't walk themselves to the slaughterhouse and kill themselves in the slaughterhouse. The cattle have to be fed food to make them fatter. That food could include grass but it also typically includes grain that's grown on uh, corn farms for example that's then taken to cattle feed. Uh, those cattle are transported by truck to the slaughterhouses uh, and from there to the uh, plants where they're frozen and made into hamburger patties. So you've got labor that's needed to uh, manage the farms, to raise the cattle. You need uh, transportation equipment. You need fossil fuels to power that transportation equipment. You need chemicals that will be applied, to exa for example, to these fields to kill weeds, to fertilize the fields, to keep pests off the crops. You'll have pharmaceuticals because if you're going to raise lots of cattle in one place, you're going to need to treat them with antibiotics and vaccinate them against common diseases. And then of course you need electricity to power all this equipment that's in the bakeries, that's in the, uh, the slaughterhouses and so on. So what you'll see is that in the instructions it asks you to diagram all these different inputs that are brought together, combined to make throughputs and eventually assembled to make your output which is your Big Mac sandwich. So in doing this exercise, what I hope you'll recognize is that the systems and the interactions between natural and human systems that are necessary to make that sandwich are very complex. And so it's not really just a simple item of assembling a sandwich and popping it into your mouth. There's a lot of natural resources, ecosystem capital, and other sorts of things that are brought together to make that food item. And so what you're going to do then is you're going to create your diagrams. You're going to add a short text in which you reflect upon the exercise and what you've learned about food systems in doing so. You're going to put them together in a PDF document and you're going to submit it electronically through my learning space. And you'll have two weeks to do that. It needs to be submitted before your next lab meeting. So the lab meetings, the first lab meeting with your instructors take place in week two of the course. And at that lab meeting, you can go over the instructions with your lab demonstrator. He or she will also do a number of little exercises to help you get to know one another, because this will be the first time for many of you to meet other participants in the course. Uh, you'll also do some exercises to sort of get your creative juices thinking about food systems generally and fast food systems in particular. And you can ask your, your lab instructor any questions about the course and where we're going with it. 
So I hope you enjoy this exercise and I'll see you in class.